Hi, my name is Kent Lee and I teach computer science at Luther College. In this video we're going to start to look at functions and how functions can be used in programs, specifically Python programs in this, uh, in this video. But uh, functions are something that come up in any programming language. A, a function is a way of writing code that can be used more than once within your program and it's also a way of structuring your programs. Uh, we probably, uh, most people have probably seen a function um, before and I, uh, I just want to demonstrate here how we might write a function. Um, for example, if we had the function y equals f of x and f, uh, f of x would be a function in that case and we might, for example, look at, uh, at the function f of x equals x squared. So if I want to write that in Python, I would write something like this. I would write the word def to say that I'm defining a function. And then I give the function a name, and I do a left parent, and any parameters that I'd want to pass to the function. Now in this case, if I'm going to define x squared, I'm going to say f of x here. So x is the parameter that I will pass to the function. We often call uh, that parameter a formal parameter, or just a parameter, but uh, either way, it's the it represents the value that is passed to a function. When I uh, if I want to return a value from a function, I write return, and if I'm going to return x squared in this case, I'm going to go ahead and return x times x. Now, if I wanted to call this function in my program, I could call it by saying f of, and then pass in a value to it. So I could say, for example, f of two. Writing f of 2 by itself on a line is not very interesting. I'd probably want to say something like y equals um, f of 2. So that way I would have y and I could go ahead and, and do something with y. And In this case I'll just go ahead and print y. So if I run this program, and I will save it here, and we'll call it uh, square. So if I run this program, I see 4 printed to the screen. Now let's do a step into and step over of this program so we can watch exactly how this program executes. And I want to, uh, to see um, the order or the sequence of statements that are executed within this program so that you understand how this thing works. So I have here this function definition and the first thing that's going to be executed in this program is the function definition. Um, now defining a function does not execute the function it simply defines it so if I do a step over here we're gonna watch and we're gonna see that we defined f but we did not execute this body of this function we all we simply defined f to the program then we jump to line 5 here where we're going to go ahead and execute this function. Now to watch a function be executed we're going to do a step into so that we can watch that function be executed. So I'm going to step into that function and stepping into that function shows me that I jump in here and now I'm ready to evaluate this line x times x. Now to see what x is I'm going to go and click on stack data here and open up locals and there I can see x is 2. So I'm about ready to execute that statement there with x being equal to 2, which means I'm going to have 4 as the result. I do a step over. You can see here what the return value is. The return value has been computed. It is 4. That's very nice that we have got that. And then I'll do another step over here. And you can see that I returned to the statement right after the function call. So uh, the order of execution here was to define the function f, then jump to line 5 where we went ahead and called the function. Then we jump to line 3 where we evaluated the body of the function, in this, in this case the return statement. And then we jumped to the line after the function call. So this is very important that you understand the sequence of, uh, of statements that are executed with a program with a function in it. So we're ready to go ahead and, and evaluate that. We can see here that y is 4. Once we've evaluated that print, we're going to see here in the debug I.O. that we printed four, and one more step over and the program is done. So that's a very simple uh, program here that squares the value of a, of a function, of a, uh, the value of a, a 
parameter or an argument that's passed to it. So a couple more things here about this function. The function's name in this case is f. I said its parameter is x, okay? And the argument that we're passing to f in this case is 2 here. So that's the argument. That's the, the word that we use there to describe it. Now we can go ahead and call this function as many times as we want. So I could say y equals f of uh, 3 if I would like to. And then I could go ahead and print y and see what its value is as well. And when I go ahead and do that, um, I've got 4 and 9 there. And of course it doesn't always have to be y equals. I can say uh, anything equals it. So I could say h, for example, equals f of uh, 4. And I could go ahead and, and call it and uh, print, of course, h as well and see what its value is there as well. So uh, there I have 4, 9, and 16. Okay, um, so uh, I would not want, however, to say something like f equals f of uh, 5 because if I did that, then I'm going to uh, confuse I'm going to confuse Python in terms of what's going on um, if I try to make any further calls to f here. So watch what happens now if I say g equals f of say let's say 6 and then print try to print g. We'll go ahead and run through this and now I get an error that says that an int object is not callable and that's because now at this point f is no longer a function in terms of this program here. I've got two f's. Um, I have the f that was the function but I changed the meaning of f here to be an integer and I can't call an integer is what Python is telling me. So, um, so we do have to be a little careful about naming variables the same name as function names. Um, variable names and function names are not separate. They're all together in one pool of names. Okay, well this is interesting that I can call f lots of different ways here and we could certainly um, fix this program so we can still go ahead and run it here. Um, but it gets even more interesting when we think about calling f lots and lots of times. So for instance, let's say that I wanted to go ahead, let's say I wanted to compute x cubed. Let's do that. And let's say that I wanted to go ahead and plot uh, x cubed to the screen. So if I import turtle, um, then I can go ahead and start to uh, write some code that's going to plot at, um, x cubed to the screen here. So I'm going to say t equals uh, turtle dot turtle and I'm going to um, get my screen screen equals t dot get screen and I'm going to set my world coordinates screen dot set world coordinates and I'll set my uh, x and my y value I think we'll go minus 10 um, minus 10 and then we'll go um, 10, 10. So lower left corner, upper right corner. This is the x and the y of the lower left, the x and the y of the upper right. And I'm going to do a, a for loop. So for, and I can call it anything I want, um, just to, to make sure that you understand. I don't have to call it x. I'm going to say 4k in range. Um, and I'm going to go from minus 10 to 10. Um, and I'm going to go, I would like to go with an increment. You know what? I'm going to do this a little differently. I'm going to say go from minus 100 to 100 and with an increment of, uh, of 1 in this case. So I'm going to compute, actually from this k, I'm going to compute an x that I want to pass in. So I'll call it my x. And uh, that's going to be equal to um, that's going to be equal to k uh, divided by um, 10 here, so that it'll go from minus 10 to 10. 
and then I'm going to compute my new y. So my y is going to be equal to f of my x. Okay, so if I, if I do that, then I can say, uh, tell my turtle to go to that spot on the screen, my x and my y, and, um, and then I'll begin drawing, and at the end I'm going to do a screen dot uh, exit on click. Now to get, before I go into the loop, to get things set up, I'm going to do a t.penup, and then I'm going to say t.go to, and I'm going to tell it to go off the screen someplace. I'm going to have it go to minus uh, 20, minus 20, so that it looks okay when it starts drawing here. We won't see the turtle when we start to draw. T dot uh, pen down to get ready to draw, and we'll give it a shot here and see what it does. So it disappears off the screen. We'll wait a little bit here as it's drawing, and soon we should see it start to draw. And there we go, just drew our line for us. Now, of course, you can see here that my x and my y, or my x goes not nearly from minus 10 to uh, 10. It's going uh, a much shorter range. If we want to speed that up, we could pick um, something less to plot it between. So we could say go from uh, minus, um, instead of minus 100, we could say go from minus 20 to uh, 20. and that should go from minus 2 to 2 then, and uh, that would make things plot a little more quickly on the screen. There we go. Not quite long enough, it looks like. I need to maybe go just a little bit further. We could go from, say, minus 30 to 30 so that we can see the whole thing on the screen, which is really going from minus 3 to 3. And there we go. We get the whole, the nice plot on the screen. So we could certainly put on an x-axis and a y-axis here and uh, get some information we, uh, for the, the user so we can see where it crosses over the x-axis approximately uh, right there um, from minus y to positive, uh, positive uh, y. Um, so that wouldn't be too hard to do here. Uh, I think I'm going to avoid doing that at the moment, though. I'll leave that as an exercise for you. Um, so this is a function. This is a uh, a program here that calls this function multiple times to go ahead and plot a value to the screen. Um, few, several things you should have learned from this video. This def defines a function but does not execute it. Um, so it defines f as a function. If I do a step into of this program and watch it executed, you can see the import happens first. The def happens next. Um, but I do not execute that program, I, that function. I go ahead and jump down here to create the turtle, and then I start working my way through the program at this point until I get down to this line. It's at that line that I'm going to go ahead and step into the function. So I jump into the function, execute it there, come back, return the value, go to the next statement after the function call to continue. Um, so we have here a program that defines a function and calls a function here. Um, and that's really what functions are all about. We define them and we call them. In the next video I'm going to show you, I'm going to talk some more about why you define and call functions and some ideas that go along with uh, designing programs using functions as well.